Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome to another episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. Today we're looking at an exciting new type of task, or I shouldn't say a new type of task, because this is actually, as it turns out, the oldest type of task. This is the original type of problem that appeared on Code Signal uh, since the beginning. So uh, this task is a bug fix, as we can see from up here. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm kind of up here today, and normally I would be kind of somewhere down there, but this is kind of a long description, so I didn't want to block any of it. Uh, so basically a bug fix is pretty similar to a code writing task. It's pretty similar to just like a standard algorithmic task. The idea in this case is that we're given the code already. So rather than us having to write all of this stuff, it's provided to us. Now you might think, well, it sounds kind of like a recovery task that we looked at a few episodes ago. And yeah, it has some similarities, except a recovery task tells us, you know, like dot, 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 we're missing the part on this line right here. Whereas a bug fix actually kind of forces us to go through the entire thing ourselves and, uh, and to really understand what the thing is asking us. That's kind of an important distinction. Uh, not just what it's asking us, but actually also how it's been implemented. So in this particular case, the problem we're dealing with has to do with combs. So Miss X wants to be able to put these combs together in her purse in such a way that they're gonna fit. Each of them have some broken teeth. They're represented as these strings consisting of asterisks and, uh, and dots. And so in terms of how we wanna solve this, it might not be immediately obvious and it might especially not be obvious that we would use like a bit mask. And so to look at this code where that seems to be the way they've implemented it, Ooh, that could be a bit of a challenge. So it's not just solving the problem, but actually understanding what's already been written. Now we like to focus on this idea of keeping the problems realistic in these kinds of problems, right? Because we want the interview or the screening to sort of reflect the kinds of responsibilities, the kinds of actions that the candidate would actually have to do on the job. So in this case, this is especially useful because Maybe there's a situation where there's been a breaking update on one of the services that you use in your industry. Maybe the code that it broke that we need to update was written by some older developer who's no longer with us. Uh, and we need to find a way to fix this kind of thing. So again, we have an idea of what we want it to do. We might even have an idea of how we would solve that problem ourselves if it was totally up to us. But the idea is the code's already been written by someone else. We need to be able to not just uh, to be able to solve the problem, but to be able to solve it in this way. We need to understand what this code is doing and then we can sort of find the error and fix it. Okay, so that makes it a bit tougher than a recovery because we don't exactly know where to look. We really have to understand the whole thing if we're gonna solve this problem. Now, just to get us started, I mean, we could take a look at the tests over here. This can give us kind of an idea of what uh, to expect, right? I mean, it's basically just from the description over here. This is example number one. So if we run the tests on this thing, what we're probably gonna find is that it's not answering all of them correctly. So seven out of 10, they don't quite all pass here. Uh, we could try to reverse engineer this, you know, take a look at some of the tests, like see if there are any patterns to what types of tests aren't working, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing is on a bug fix challenge, and, and this is something I guess I should have mentioned earlier, we can only change one line. So it's not just that, you know, there's one line of code that's not working. It's that we can only change that one line of code. If we were allowed to change whatever, then, you know, we could just like write our own function up here, all the things we need to do, like uh, put down some variables, eventually return whatever it is. And then the code below, it just wouldn't get executed. But we can't do that because we can only change one line of code here. Now, let's say we made a few changes like, uh, you know, mask plus three or something like that, right? And then maybe we changed like uh, some other line over here, less than or equal to. Uh, and eventually we're finding, oh, I, I don't know what I've changed. Uh, how can I get it back to the point where there, everything is as it came and I can just zoom in on one line? Well, that's why we have the reset button. So we're gonna hit reset, we're gonna confirm that. And basically the idea is that, yeah, we can only change one line. We'd have to go through this whole thing to really get what that one line is. And it might be really simple, you know? It could be that all we need to do is change one character and then run the code and then surprisingly everything is fixed. 
it's not just a matter of how big of an impact we need to have. It's not just a matter of like how many characters we need to change. Although it's kind of a matter of that. I'll get to that in a second. But what I'm saying is that even though this solution was so simple, just changing one character here, well, if you don't know, then it's really not that simple, right? If we don't know this is where the error is, then we're not going to be able to change that one character or to know to change that one character. Uh, and we're not going to know that the error is here unless we really have an understanding of how this code is working. The idea that it's, you know, converting these things into a bit mask, that it's using bitwise operators to sort of check for collisions. So things like these um, shifts, these left shifts over here, the bitwise and that we're seeing, we would really have to have an understanding of a lot of JavaScript. Well, in this case, JavaScript, but you know, whatever language you want to look at, we'd really have to have an understanding of how this is working in order to make that simple change that's going to answer the question. Okay, so uh, I mentioned something about the number of characters we need to change. So there are some limitations on this. Now, uh, in terms of how this is working on the back end, it's very, very similar to an algorithmic task in the sense that all of this code that's in the IDE gets sent over to a code runner server, which is a dedicated server that's just there to run this code without any interference so that we don't need to worry about like our bandwidth, processor speed or anything like that. It's going to be sort of standardized. Uh, and that's kind of important because there's a time limit to these things, right? Four seconds in the case of JavaScript. So basically the idea is it's going to send it to the code runner. It's going to run on the code runner free of interference. It's going to return the result and then it's going to say, oh, okay, you got this many correct. And if it's all of them, then we can go ahead and submit that and everyone's going to be very happy. In terms of the additional limitations on this, so there are some uh, some limitations imposed just by the code signal server itself and you know without sending it to the code runner. So basically it's going to check internally to see have you changed more than one line over here and if you have it's not going to let you submit. It's also going to check for the number of characters that you've changed or added and the way that works is basically we take the intended solution, right? So like a possible solution that's considered sort of the right way of doing it. And then we allow, basically, let's say X represents the number of characters added by that ideal solution. We would say 2X plus one is gonna be the, the hard limit on how many characters we can add. So there's a bit of a buffer there. There's a bit of breathing room in case you have some other kind of similar way of doing it, of, of solving the problem, uh, but maybe it's just a little more verbose. So that's the idea behind that one. So one more thing I want to say about this one that's uh, kind, of a, kind of a more nuanced feature of this, which is that a task like this not only is going to check your comprehension skills for you know, code review, that sort of thing, but it's also going to check your visual debugging skills in the sense that I can't like throw in a bunch of console logs here. It's not going to let me, right? It's going to say, I oh, can only change one line. I would have to be really clever and judicious about my use of, of console logs or prints or whatever it is, depending on the language you're using. So it forces us to be good enough at having an understanding of what's going on behind the scenes just by looking at the code. And again, that might be something you're looking for in a candidate. So if that's the case, this could be a very good type of task for you. All right. I think that's all I had to say about this type of task. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.